So while it's clear that PSMA PET scan has great utility in newly diagnosed high-risk patients, I think most people would agree on that, and it's widely used today across the world if, if it's available. There are some other areas where its utility is really not proven. So that if you think about prostate cancer, one area that comes up not infrequently is the patient who's already castrate resistant uh, and has no evidence of metastatic cancer, so or M0. CRPC, and that's generally on conventional imaging where you say they have no evidence of metastatic cancer uh, despite a rising PSA. In that setting, PSMA PET scan is generally used, uh, which is similar to the patients with, with castrate-sensitive disease who, with a biochemical relapse, relapse post-definitive therapy, most would recommend, in fact, all guidelines recommend PSMA PET CT. So that, those early areas, I think it's pretty universally used. Would, where it's a little bit um, confusing and really where there's not a whole lot of evidence is patients that are metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer. So you have a patient who's on hormonal therapy or ADT, maybe with an androgen receptor selective inhibitor and their PSA is going up. Is there any utility in that setting to do PSMA PET? Um, Frequently they'll have conventional imaging and it doesn't show any evidence of progression, but if you do PSMA PET CT, maybe it will show progression. And then it's confusing, well, should I change therapy because of the PSMA PET CT shows progression, but all the studies were done without PSMA PET CT. I think what a lot of uh, investigators and clinicians are looking for is, is evidence for what's called oligoprogression, meaning that one side of disease is getting worse and so if you have a patient on therapy, we know with a lot of therapies, uh, in many diseases where if you have an escape lesion or one lesion is getting worse on, let's say, immunotherapy or systemic therapy like hormonal therapy, and you treat that one lesion, maybe you can put the patient back into a remission. So with the, and so there, that has not been proven, but there are some prospective trials treating oligometastatic prostate cancer to see if that actually translates to improvement in survival. The other area, which is even more confusing, is response to therapy. So people think of a PET scan, right? Let's say in lymphoma, you have a FTG PET or in lung cancer and patients get treated and they respond and you can use the PET CT to gauge response and it's widely accepted. So many uh, clinicians will use PSMA PET scan in that setting and to see is the patient responding, uh, even though they have widely metastatic disease, instead of getting conventional imaging, they use PSMA PET CT. And all those areas are really not, you know, the, the utility or the benefit or what improvement you'll have in that setting is really not been well defined. Um, and up until now, the FDA does not look at PSMA PET CT as a surrogate for conventional imaging to see progression or, or response. So I think there'll be more studies in that area. There are a lot of reports, I mean, many, many reports, mostly single institution. So as that data gets aggregated, I think we'll be able to define in what scenario is a PSMA PET CT useful in patients with cash resistant, you know, widely metastatic prostate cancer.